Hey guys, I'm Natalia, the founder of Upskill Me, and here on my channel I talk a lot about achieving native-like fluency. I'm not a native speaker myself, have never lived in an English-speaking country for longer than three months, and I'm sharing the practical strategies and exercises that work for me. In this video we're going to talk about a skill which I think is totally overlooked, namely switching between different languages. How fast should that happen? I work with a lot of students who are already upper intermediate. Some students are advanced and that's not enough for them. They all want to go beyond what they already know. They all are working on achieving native-like fluency, which means mastering the nine skills that I talk about often in the series of other videos. Not knowledge, not grammar, not vocabulary. We're talking about skills and mentality. And this is totally overlooked. Even advanced students often tell me when they come to class that they need time to adapt, that they need time to tell their brain that, okay, now it's English, now you have to stop thinking in Russian, it's English time. And sometimes it takes them a long time to switch from one language to another. They tell me, Natalia, hold on, hold on, I, I can't be that fast, I'm still thinking in the Russian language, I've spoken Russian all day at work, give me some time to get used to the new atmosphere and to switch into English. And, and you know what? It should not take so long. Another very simple criteria of fluency, real fluency, native-like fluency, is when it takes you milliseconds to switch from one language to another. You were speaking to a friend in Russian, or whatever your first language is, and then you turn to a foreigner who only understands English and you can answer their question with ease. And if you speak any other foreign language, you can listen to the announcement at the train station and you clearly understand what's going on and you understand what you need to do. Is the train being delayed? Do you need to change the platform? You can react to all the signals that are coming at you in different languages very fast. Note how long it takes you right now to switch from one language to another. And if it takes longer than you would like it to take, here are the exercises that you can do. Again, I'm only sharing the list of things that works for me, and you're welcome to do them and share in the comments if they're working for you as well. If you know any other exercises that can be helpful at this stage, please also share in the comments. So the first exercise sounds creepy and crazy, but it works. Talk to yourself. And it doesn't mean talk to yourself in a creepy way. It means Practice vocalizing your ideas. Very often we think we speak perfect English in our head, but once we start vocalizing our ideas, we find that it's not as easy to articulate our ideas in words. Whenever you have an idea, a compelling idea, an interesting message that you want to deliver at an internal meeting tomorrow, or something that you feel like you need to write down, maybe for a blog post, or maybe something that you want to say to a client on a phone call tomorrow, say it out loud. What I like to do is I like summarizing the podcast or the movies that I found interesting for myself and I summarize them out loud or in the written form. That's the next exercise. But for now, talk to yourself, you know, not in a boring way. I don't really understand those tasks where people say, like, talk about your day or something that is not for example, interesting to you, don't do it. If it's not interesting, don't do it. Do things that matter to you. For example, I like to talk about things that I want to know how to talk about. I love telling stories and this is what I would do. For example, I would tell a story that I think helps me make a point to myself first. Another thing I do is if I hear an interesting idea or if I read something interesting, I will summarize it out loud and I will send a voice message to myself. I will create a voice memo and then I will listen to it and I can give feedback to myself. Did I connect the words right? Did I use the right grammar? Does it actually make sense? Is my message logical? Does my story make sense? The second exercise is listen to a lot of English speech, not prepared speech. And I find podcasts are a great tool, either podcasts or live interviews. A lot of podcasts are interviews anyway. When you get to listen to how people talk in real life, and this is not prepared speech, unlike a movie or a TED talk, you learn how people converse without preparation. You learn so many 
nuances and details, you learn how connected speech sounds, you learn what articles have to do in your speech and when they need to be used, you learn very interesting vocabulary that you probably know but you never use yourself. So find a time slot in your schedule where you can listen to a podcast. For me, let's say that works very well around breakfast time. I will usually listen to a podcast as I'm cooking breakfast or sometimes as I'm having my coffee. And I always listen to it with a pen in my head. If I'm listening attentively and something gets my attention, I write this word combination down. I listen to English speech with a purpose to enrich my own speech, not just with a purpose to listen to English. I can listen to it all day. I can turn my TV on, it's going to be playing on the background all day long, but it's not what I want. I want to deliberately improve my own speech and my own performance. I make sure that after I'm done with my coffee, I have at least two word combinations written down. Word combinations that I found ingenious, interesting, fascinating. And I said at least two, but that's wrong actually, maximum two, that would be correct. If I try to write down more than two, then I feel exhausted and it feels like a, a tiring exercise rather than a journey of curiosity. So a podcast for me is a journey of curiosity. I'm curious what's going to come next and I'm waiting for this curious thing to come armed with a pen in my hand. The next thing you can do is write all your to-do lists in English. Very simple idea, I think so many other people have spoken about it before, but it works, it does work because, again, your to-do list is something that matters to you. When you do your to-do list in English, you need to think about what you need to do, you need to write it down so you're creating new neural connections in your brain, you're practicing your writing skills, and you're practicing to write down only what matters. You're not writing a sentence there, you're practicing to write exactly what you need to remember. That works too, and then when you look at it, you have a whole bunch of associations in English. That's the magic of this exercise. You look at it and you have associations with that bullet point or to-do item in English. Another great exercise is describing a picture. What I like to do is I like opening children's books. You open a book for kids and you start describing everything you see fast. So this is how you can test yourself. Do you know the names for all these things? Like for example, this is, an art this is a chimney here. Do you know what this thing is called? How would, what would you call that? Yeah, so this is obviously books, but what is that? Is that a pile of books, a stack of books? What do you call that, right? What is that? Is that a picture, a painting? What are those flowers? Do you know what to call them? Describe any pictures. I usually work with whatever is available at hand right now. I like to work with children's books because um, very often you find unexpected things in them and they're always colorful and full of details. Uh, sometimes I will just click at that website that generates random images online and I will work with that. It should be unexpected so because we're training the skill of switching from one language to another fast. And it's not about speaking fast. It all starts with your thought. So what you really want to do is you want to learn to switch your thought process very fast. And this will result in words that you utter in a different language and they're gonna come to you fast as well. But if you're stuck here in your thought process, then it's really not easy to produce sentences, right? Or stories in the English language. And you don't want to sound like you're struggling for words, it should feel easy and very natural. Another exercise that I like is talking to your AI assistant. If you use an iPhone, that's going to be Siri. If you use Android, you have a Google assistant. Talk to them. You will be practicing ways to find out what the weather is going to be like tomorrow. You will practice asking your way around. You will learn how to find things on the map, you can give certain tasks to your AI assistant. And again, that's just another excuse to speak more English in a thoughtful way because you need to send a very direct request and then you're going to get help. If it doesn't understand you, it means either you need to structure your thoughts better or you need to improve your pronunciation. And the language of your phone should be English switch the language of your phone to English if it's not yet. You will learn so many new words and you will 
also learn the logic of things, how the logic works in the English language, how things are connected, how words are connected, what signals mean what. Trust me, when I moved to Germany, the first thing I did is I switched my phone into German and that helped me so much. And every time, even though I was thinking a lot in Russian and in English, my English was already very good at that time, but every time I would look at my phone, I would have to switch my thought process to German because I had to figure out where is the send button? What is it in German? Send, check, uh, reply. Every time you look at your phone, you will be practicing switching from one language to another. That's amazing. Another good exercise is watch English movies, of course, you've heard about it a million times, but watch them with subtitles on. I have another video that explains why it is important. When you listen to connected speech in the English language, you want to connect these three things. I have a picture of a triangle that explains that. How it sounds, what it means, and how you're supposed to spell it. All these things need to be connected. So when you're watching a movie with subtitles, you're learning to connect uh, the words, the way you see them with how they actually sound and what they actually mean. Because a lot of people share with me, for example, maybe you can relate to that, that it's very difficult for them to watch movies with subtitles because they're either reading the subtitles or they're enjoying the movie. It's very hard for them to do both things simultaneously. If they start reading, then they stop listening to what people are saying. And if they start listening carefully to what people are saying, they cannot follow the transcript. It can be very frustrating and uh, it's a good skill to learn. Another totally overlooked skill, I would say. Once you teach your brain to connect these two processes and to immediately identify the words that you couldn't hear or you couldn't understand, find them in the subtitles and um, fill in the blanks, sort of. It's gonna be also a lot easier for you to switch from one language to another. Another important thing, send voice messages. I know a lot of people hate voice messages because most voice messages are rambly, long, messy, and people are just not being very clear about what they wanna say. But when you practice sending voice messages, to people, practice summarizing. That's why you need the skill of summarizing. Practice summarizing what you mean and condensing your message so that it sounds clear, precise, and easy to understand. And you know, when I send voice messages to people, I understand that I am creating practical material for myself because I can always listen again to my own voice messages and I can analyze my speech, I can give feedback to myself, I can find the mistakes that I want to fix, I can fix them and next time I can sound better. That's the whole point of it. Don't send voice messages for the sake of practicing what you already know. Send voice messages with an intention to listen to them in the future, analyze them, and improve what you immediately see can be improved. If you have an opportunity to get high quality professional feedback on the way you talk, and if somebody can help you fix those mistakes, that's even better. Because every time you say something, every time you speak, you want to sound better than you did before. And again, when you go around your day and you do your work or your chores, you might find yourself thinking in your first language. Of course, you talk to your family, you do business in your first language probably, and then boom, you need to send a voice message in English. You need to switch really fast to thinking in this language in order to send a clear and precise voice message that doesn't sound too long and too confusing. And another thing I can recommend, of course, take my courses. I have so many of them on my platform and they all teach you strategies to move to native-like fluency through writing, through listening, through improving your speaking skills. They offer a bunch of interesting, unusual, and very, very simple exercises that will help you move to native-like level and all my courses imply individual feedback from myself and from our native speaking instructors. Well, I hope that helps. Uh, let me know in the comments if these exercises work for you and if you've been doing them and for how long. And I'll speak to you in the next videos.